Attention. Go. No, I really like that. That corner's under pressure from the from the steers people, the bow people, to be making those adjustments because it's a very intense feeling after the start line. So that is impressive. I like that, and hopefully it gives them a great course off to start now. I was nervous there. Long hold of the start. The crews had to reset. They had to keep their heads in the game. And first of all, Heartbreak. quick warning for Heartbreak. Phelps is asking them to move over back to their station. Look at that shot. You're staring down at almost 2,000 metres now. Who's going to be victorious and move on through the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup today? And there we go. It looks like Heartbreak are returning to their station. You can see that steering adjustment. Hopefully now they correct straight across across the course. But that's a fantastic start. Half a length advantage about coming through a quarter mile. Lovely side shot here from the camera crew. I love this shot. You actually get to see the intensity almost at water level of what is happening in this race. Shrewsbury at the top of your screen. In that yellow boat that came to the qualification regatta. So there, Shrewsbury. You've had a great week. You can't just rock up here and race, and You have to actually qualify or be deemed fast enough if you're one of the international crews to come. So for this crew here to get through to the Thursday, it's been a great week for them. But at the moment, Heartbreak have taken a length lead. Yes, they have. And that Heartbreak crew, you can just see they are taking it maybe one or two strokes per minute more than the crew from, from Shrewsbury. But they've not broken them, have they? They've got this sort of three-quarter of a length advantage, but still a very tight race. The standard of these junior rowers. These, these athletes here are aged between 15, Tilda, who's in the two seat of this boat, 15 up to 18. These are, these are very young women. And the standard they're rowing at and the physiology they've got, it's mind blowing. It's, it's intense as well. They train hard. A lot of these athletes will be training sort of up to 12 times a week, probably at school, before and after school, doing all their exams as well. It's pretty tough stuff. If you're a junior rower watching this, or a parent, or a caregiver, or an auntie, or anyone watching this, think about these children. They're going through GCSEs, they're going through A-levels, and they're balancing that with this intense training. You often find very, very high performers in our sport are going off to the very best universities, but managing this workload at the same time. As we see a great shot there, the Shrewsbury School Oars. They're doing a great job there. They're just being outclassed today. I love that sort of concentrating face from Tara Lloyd in the three seat of the Shrewsbury crew. Tongue out. That's a that's one of those great sort of you see it from a lot of rowers, is it how they distract themselves from the pain or or what is it? Yeah, sometimes you always don't know what you're doing with your face, do you, until someone shows you a video of Henley. Um, you don't often get to see it. And I think um if you look back at it and go, What's my tongue doing sticking out the side of my mouth? Maybe my coach always used to want us to have relaxed faces, keep the energy in the muscles that need it. Here we go. They look, looks like the Shrewsbury crew is struggling a little bit here, but now Hartbury are really putting some power down, aren't they? But you can see this gusty sort of, there's some, a lot of gusts coming over the coming over the course, and it's just picking up the blades. And this little shot here just showed a little wobble, but that's nothing to do with what the crews are doing. It's to do with what the river's doing, what the weather's doing. It really is a difficult course to row on. Yeah, and actually, we're looking at this Hartbury College crew. We haven't seen much of them as a unit this year because they've been split up into different crews. Chloe and Millie, so who's sitting in three in stroke, actually won the champ double at national schools this year. Um, got a course record. I've actually won the champ doubles at national schools, so that means I don't have the course record anymore. But, um, you know, they're, they're seeing the pedigree of these two separate groups from the college coming together with the slightly younger bow and two seats who've been in a mixture of crews and until the Hudson Hulls and the two seat she was in the junior 16 quarter national school so a real mix in this boat Jack. There is and, and what they're doing so well is they're getting a great grip at the start of the, at the start of the stroke once they put their blades in you don't see them get to the finish of the stroke super quickly but they're really getting hold of the river getting hold of that water and propelling their boat along I really really like that. And you're racing at the regatta this year is it bumpy out there how does it feel how's the water this year? It's probably the bumpiest I've known it, actually. Probably partly because it's the record entry. We have the most crews we've ever had, so there are so many people out on the water warming up, training, whatever. And each boat makes a lot of wash. You can see a bit coming off this boat here. I have a couple of hundred boats out at a time sometimes. It's like a washing machine out there. But that's what we like to see. Our sport is skillful, it's powerful. And if you've got the skills to come here and row on this bit of water, you're testing yourself, you're stretching yourself to the limit. And Look at this synchronization in Hartbury. That's a great overhead shot. Shows you what it looks like in the middle of a rowing boat. 
The legs are getting squeezed down there together. There, they're not rushing, they're not going any faster than the speed of the boat. Yeah, so for those of you that aren't rowers and would like to sort of feel how this feels, next time you're at the gym, get a 15 kilo dumbbell in each hand and do 220 squat, squat jumps in a row. And that is what these girls are doing right now. Well, that sounds painful. I'm not sure I'm glad my days of this are over, but that looks effortless, but they're really driving hard. They're still driving hard here. They've not taken how many strokes per minute they're taking down an awful lot. And I think that call might come here as they pass into the final third of the race. They're going to pass Remnant. Another 600 metres to go. Can they start enjoying it here? I think this is the time you have to start enjoying it. Like, I, I think it's the most important thing, and I've raced at Henning lots of times. You never know when it'll be your last race. This could be their last race. You never know if you'll race here again. You have to enjoy these moments. And there's nothing quite like rowing through the stewards' enclosure when you're ahead. It's wonderful. It really is a special feeling. And for the Shrewsbury rowers here, form book was against them. They went through qualifiers. They're up against a very strong crew here. But look at that overhead. It shows you the standard there of these young athletes being able to get down this course, being able to qualify. Nice and relaxed in the shoulders. It looks loose and powerful. They're doing a good job. But can you guys in this crew, in this school, go back when that season starts in September and remember this feeling of losing at Henley? Can you train a little bit harder? Can you lift that little bit extra in the gym? Can you help the crewmates out a little bit more? Remember this, I'm sure we're gonna see these crews again. Yeah, and it looks like for the middle pair in the Shrewsbury School, they're both 17, so hopefully we'll be back here again next year. Hopefully they'll go back to training and have this, watch this race and think, never again. Yeah, and they're not doing much wrong, Jack. I think it's, um, it's nice rowing, and this crew is a mixture of some sweet rowers. Annabelle Starmer, who's in the two seat, rode in the girls Cox 4 at National School, so she was doing sweep rowing, actually not sculling, where you have two oars in one hand. So being able to be really, you know, flexible, to be able to switch between disciplines is hard in itself, isn't it? It certainly is. The flexibility to do both is, is a real skill. And, and as a sculler, I would always say that the sculling is much more technical and much harder. So. Oh, oh don't, if you're listening, don't listen to that. I'm, but, a, I'm a sweet rower. The scullers always bang on about how hard sculling is. We used to jump in our single sculls and do it half the year. The tricky stuff comes in the big boats, but we'll go into that further and through the regatta, Jack. But, they, you know, like, like you said, they, they aren't doing anything wrong. They're rowing fantastically as well. Just this Hartbury College crew is fantastic, is, the, is brilliant. Look at that. They are powerful. They're rowing so efficiently, so long. They're going to be really pleased with that race. Yep, and we haven't seen much of this crew through the year. Uh, are there going to be ones to watch as the regatta progresses? We saw Wycliffe College, one of the absolute favourites earlier this morning. I'm sure Wycliffe might be taking a look at this and seeing how dominant their partners are, they're literally in the same county in Gloucestershire. Um, they probably haven't seen much of them or raced against them. I'd be a little bit afraid of Hartley College if I was them right now, but they have shown their pedigree and they've come through to take the win this morning in the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup as they have a little fist bump. It's a, it's a job, job well done, not arms in the air morning for them. Shrewsbury School come across the line, finishes their regatta, a good race by them. That's a win, Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup for Hartbury College over Shrewsbury School.